1908, a large explosion happened over Siberia, in Russia, near the Tunguska River. To understand what happened here, and what consequences it might have for us, we have to look at what makes up the non-planetary bodies in our solar system. As well as dwarf planets, moons and planets, our solar system has dust, comets and asteroids. Now due to how they were originally formed, the comets tend to have a greater proportion of ice in them, and asteroids have more nickel or iron, making generally denser than comets. However, the way they were both formed is by smaller pieces of dust and debris aggregating together, which means whilst they can both be quite dense and appear to be solid, they're nowhere near as solid as the rocky planets. Instead, they quite often have multiple deep cracks or flaws in them, which means if they're struck with enough force, they'll split in two or even shatter. This force can be colliding with another space object, or it can be gravitational forces of the planets or the sun, causing these flaws to overload it. This brings us back to what's known as the Tunguska event in 1908. Something exploded in the air over Siberia, about the equivalent size of a thousand times the size of the nuclear bombs dropped on Japan at the end of the Second World War. This force was so great, it knocked down an estimated 60 to 80 million trees and over an area of more than 2,000 square kilometres. Luckily, it's in such a remote part of the world that no one was known to have died as a direct, direct result of the explosion, but the remoteness has hampered the investigation of the event. Date and size of the explosion rule out any human involvement whatsoever. Whilst there were some eyewitnesses of the event, they were at least 40 miles away from the epicentre of it, and due to the nature of Russian history over the next few years, combined with there was no scientific investigation carried out until 1921, we cannot know with absolute certainty how the explosion occurred. We can rule out anything natural from the Earth, so that really leaves us either with a comet or an asteroid entering our atmosphere and breaking up before it hit the surface. And we don't actually think it hit the Earth as a single large object, since generally the destruction was over such a large area and the pattern of devastation which has been described as a butterfly resembles that would have been achieved if the object had broken in two somewhere in the low atmosphere. Now there is a possibility that Lake Chenko may have been created by the impact with the Earth, but there are also some doubts about this. It leaves us with the question, comet or asteroid? A comet certainly would have been capable of vanishing without much of a trace after the explosion, except for a reported afterglow which was seen in the night sky. Generally, the most likely comet fragment would have disintegrated at too high an altitude to cause the damage that was seen. Now, an asteroid would have left traces of nickel or iron in the environment and could have held together long enough to make it to the required level in our atmosphere. There have been some evidence of traces left behind in the destroyed trees, this nickel and iron, but if it was an asteroid which split in two at a low level, it generally should have been impact craters left behind, unless the two halves themselves also disintegrated soon after. However, late investigation has meant that the conclusive result is not actually possible. So, could this kind of event wipe out a city? Certainly an event on the scale over the top of a city would kill most of the inhabitants. It's estimated that an event of the size of the Tunguska happens about once every thousand years or so. There may be around 500 cities of over a million people covering about a quarter of a million square miles, but that's actually less than 1% of the Earth's surface. So the average time between a single city destroying event is over a hundred thousand years. That's just the average. One could happen next year or not for a million years. Seeing one coming will be the key. Now, asteroids are relatively close to the Earth, but they're dark and difficult to spot. But their closeness means it is possible to find them and track them. 
it, given enough time and enough money, the paths can be followed. The problem comes down with comets. You spend most of the time at a great distance from the sun, making them almost impossible to spot. But as they come closer in, they produce the classic tail, which makes them clearly visible. That only is a couple of months before they actually approach the Earth. So, do we need more investigation to tracking asteroids and comets? Yes. Are we going to be wiped out by them? Probably not.